Uh, this is the brand new series of the expert uh, for uh, Python programmers. So, uh, before that, uh, um, before starting this tutorial, the first tutorial, I recommend you to watch the intermediate series if you haven't watched it, uh, what, watched it yet, because uh, we'll be using a lot of terminologies and a lot of concepts of intermediate uh, uh, intermediate series in this expert series. Uh, so in this first tutorial, we're gonna learn that uh, we're gonna see that how you can declare a function, a, a class inside a function, and then you uh, where you can use uh, functions and the oops concept, uh, uh, a, a different oops concept in your program. So uh, first of all, uh, let's say that. Uh, uh, so before starting uh, the code work, uh, uh, you must have some knowledge about the Python interpreters, how the Python interpreters work. So if you don't, then uh, moving in detail, uh, sorry, moving in brief, I must give you, I must say that uh, the Python interpreter basically takes the Python code. First of all, it takes the Python code and then it it basically translates and then uh, into bytecode and checks the syntax. Uh, of your language whether your syntax of the python program which you have written is correct or not and then basically it uh, translates it into a byte code and then the byte that byte code it tra is translated into a python virtual machine and then it gives the output so uh, it it must sound you it must sound a lot to you but it is it basically the main function of uh, basically if you look on the paper uh, the paper overview so the what uh, the interpreter basically does is it basically takes the source code or your high level language code as the source code and it basically just trans uh, sorry the it just basically outputs or give the output uh, of the instruction that you have written in your program uh, so basically that doesn't takes a lot of time and uh, uh, yes it does uh, take a lot of time uh, when it comes to giving the output uh, but uh, when it's when it gets uh, when uh, if you talk about getting the translated then it doesn't take a lot of time and uh, that's where the com uh, interpreter is uh, slower than compiler because compiler basically what it does is it takes the high level language code and then basically it translates the whole code into your machine code and uh, and uh, interpreter basically reads the whole line uh, it goes in the program it checks the program line by line so that's where the interpreter is slow so let's get started with the first tutorial so this first tutorial uh, we're going to use as you know that we're going to use some of the functions and the oops concept uh, in our program differently so in the first code we'll declare a class sorry a function first of all we'll name it a make class and then i'll give a parameter uh, x and then i'll declare a class and the class name will be person uh, sorry person and then i'll basically just declare my instructor which is the init instructor and then i'll declare the self and then name and then name i'll say that self sorry self dot name is equals to name so i'll again just make another method because as you know the function inside a class is known as method so i'll declare another method i'll say that print value I'll name it print value and what it will return is it basically it will print me the value of this x which i declared over here right over here it'll declare me just and then i'll just basically return my class person okay so as you know that i haven't uh, made it as the instance of my class i'm just returning my whole class because i'm de defining it under uh, function and so for basically uh, making uh, making it uh, returning the values and the of that uh, class you have to just basically call the return return a uh, return method uh, return method with the class name so let's give some output so let's say we'll declare a param uh, variable cls you can take any other variable you can just say xyz or something like that you can take anything i'm just declaring cls is equals to i'll uh, i'll explain what it's doing here i just say give the value of x as 10 and let me just print this uh, first of all let me just print the value of cls 
so i'll go in my command prompt and if i run it yes you can see that uh, uh my this class method uh sorry this my yes i have returned i have successfully returned my class inside a function so as you can see that uh, this class may uh, uh this class main make class is uh, is my main class yes this make class uh, function which i have defined here is my main class here and this person basically is the subclass in it or the another class which i have defined inside the make class function uh so what i did here is uh you must uh, if 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 you watch my if you see if you have seen my uh, intermediate series in that intermediate series uh in the in the uh, in in that series i've uh, just basically told you how that you you can return the instances of any class and how can you make a class object of the class so basically what i did here was i have just initialized that i've just uh, told uh, my uh, the python that this make class i am basically defining the make class as my main class or uh, as a class and then after that i am returning it here and now if we, if you want to just print the value of the class so i'll say that uh, print uh, sorry uh, here i'll say that t is equals to yes and now uh, if i have uh, when when i have told my python that this uh, cls is my uh, that make class this make class function is my main class then i can just uh, create an object or the instance of that class so uh, how we did uh, was like something like this that i called my cls class name which i have defined it here is known as cls cls and then i'll give the name of the for this variable i'll say let's say that uh, code any any shares and now if i say t dot print t dot name then if we go in here yes you can see that basically my code initiatives name has been printed because i have just basically created an instance of my class or the object of my class here uh, you can give any other parameters let's say that uh, another parameter h and i'll just basically define it here self sorry self dot h is equal to h and if i give again the value here initiative and the value is uh, let's say 100 the age is 100 let's say for now and if I print the age value here you can see yes now my age value has been printed because I have successfully initiate created an instance of my class or sorry or the object of my class and uh, so that was and now if I let's say that I want basically to print the value so I'll just say that d dot print oh not like this sorry I'll just basically call this function print value okay okay okay, okay. so my class name was uh, I've basically defined it here so I can use CLS or class name anything so I can use either you can use CLS dot print value or you can use that T dot print value both are same basically uh, uh, not the same basic uh, in, in this CLS basically we are just defined the class name but uh, for printing that value of a particular instance you can just call that T dot print value because in D we have just uh, created our instance so I'm I want to print the uh i want to, i want to call this method print value for my d instance so okay so if i run it again really takes a position long man but they're going none okay 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 i haven't defined a self here okay yes you can see that my value of which was 10 here initially uh is, it has been printed over here too so that was how you, how you can basically use the class inside a function so let's move on and let's, let's talk about the end of the code let's say that uh, the range function an example of range function so let's say for i in range let's say 10 
and just we can de uh, declare another function show function and I'll just say print I to multiply by 2 okay. so now guys you must notice that if I call this uh, show function over here what it will do is first of all let me get this uh, what okay yes you can see uh, that it's ba it basically print it's basically printing the value from 0 to 9 uh, all the values from 0 to 9 if, if I if I basically use this function inside this range in, inside this for loop uh, it's if I call this function inside this for loop so if I call this method or function and outside the for loop you th there's a basic logic over here yes you can see that uh, the value of 18 is only being printed because basically it uh, the show uh, method it it basically it's, it's storing the la last value the sorry the latest value for i which is 9 of course so 9 um, multiplied by 2 it's equals to 8 so that was like this now I say that you want to create a function for base so now let's say that uh, give an example of function inside function so what I'll do is um, basically give, take an example of uh, printing the even value so I'll say check even oh sorry check even I'll call this a 10 and what I'll do is Sorry, it is basically take number, it's x basically. Okay, inside the function, I'll just basically for even, I'll do like this. Okay, so if x mod, sorry, mod 2 is equal to, equal to 0, then it will just basically print this value and else okay, else it will basically I'll just say call another function over here okay so uh, this if uh, value sorry I will just basically write this whole code again this uh, statement again this all statements again because say, we must declare this if value goes outside this function then only we can just call a function and then basically check the value so I'll just basically if x mod 2 is equals to equals to 0 then we'll just basically even this sorry is even uh, Yes, we'll say is even, and basically we just print the value, the number is even. Okay, so now in the else part, what we'll do is if it isn't uh, the value or the remainder isn't zero, so I'll I'll just call this function again is even function because we have just basically go by the same name and I'll just say that print the number is odd okay so now outside this if else I'll just return my is even and now guys uh let me just call my anaconda wrong to king uh yes goes in like that anaconda prompt and i'll just say python expert ey syntax okay so I have just given this syntax is incorrect okay so I haven't uh, basically called this uh, take num function over here so I'll just basically say take num 
I just will give the value of it as 10. So, yes, the number is even. So, if I just give the value of 11, the number is sort, obviously. So, what basically it's doing over here, it basically checks, uh, takes the, uh, uh, I basically just called this uh, take num uh, function here, and then I just given the value of x over here as 11. And then now it basically checks the value for x that whether it the remainder is zero. If it's zero, so let's basically change the name of this function over here. We'll just say that we'll just call this function as x y z to make it uh, more common. Okay, so now it basically uh, and if the remain if the remainder is zero, so it basically it uh, call it. Uh, goes inside this function x y z and it basically prints the what it's what it is asked to print the, that as the number is even and else uh, if the remainder is not zero so it will go in again it will uh, we have called the same function because we have just we have to basically written the same function over here so it will go in in this inside the same function and it will just basically print the number is odd and then we have returned this uh, x y z function over here and then we have basically called the stake num function and then given the value of 11 okay so that was it guys for the first tutorial uh so there uh so yes that, that that's it for the first tutorial so meet you in the next tutorial if you like this video please subscribe to code initiatives and share with your geeky friends programmer friends till then goodbye take care and keep coding